Okay, guys, look, listen. I don't know about you guys, but I love to explore the fascinating world of the unknown. Today, we're diving headfirst into the world of scary things caught on camera. We've got a lineup of weird and scary moments all captured by those ever watchful eyes of the security cameras, of course. From strange and creepy encounters with creatures that, I don't know, defy description to the unexplained events that have left viewers literally sitting there scratching their heads, wondering what just happened. We're going to be exploring all of it. So, get comfortable. Please, grab your blankets. If you like, and let's dive in. Guys, who knows what we might discover? Seriously, it could be anything. Anything. From a car moving on its own, to possession, hell, even the missing. But remember, sometimes the scariest things are the ones we can't explain, okay? So, with all that being said, hold on to your blankets and your sense of adventure, okay? of a demonic entity. The baffled doctors managed to calm him down with a lot of effort. Watch the demonic expression on his face.
These guys were out exploring when they caught a demon on camera. Take a look. Those footsteps. Damn it! My video back. When I look back at the video, you could see that he didn't look like himself, but that's not how he looked through my eyes. Maybe that's what the camera caught. Uh, I think they forgot to mention this shadow figure that's controlling your friend, bud. That's not your friend anymore. He's gone. That is not your friend. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, follow me on YouTube for more spooky content. Do it now. This next video was posted by Athelaine Sevilla, who received footage of a chilling incident that took place in a foreign country. The footage shows a group of people standing on the street when they see something that terrifies them. We have no idea as to what they're seeing, but whatever it is, it seems to be very unsettling. It isn't until we see the footage from a different angle that we notice what it was that terrified them. This is what they saw. Be sure to look closely for this one, or you'll miss it. Somehow, a bicycle appears to have come out of nowhere as soon as the person on the motorcycle parks his vehicle. Now, some people think that the silhouette seen here might be a spirit of some sort, but this may be somebody whose figure is being distorted due to the camera's quality. What seems to be unexplainable is the bicycle that appears out of thin air. Where exactly did it come from? Viewers can't help but think that this might be a physical manifestation of an entity. But as always, it's up to you to decide if that's the case. As with all videos, this one remains a mystery. This man is not his father. In fact, the boy doesn't even know him. As the boy was playing in the water nearby, the man grabbed him, saying that he was his mother's fiance. As they were walking down the pier, the employees noticed a suspicious scenario. When they got closer, the boy hid behind one of the employees, as the mysterious man claimed that he was his father. Feeling like something was off, the employees did not give back the boy. And as the man took off, one of the employees followed him, while the other found the boy's mom. The employee continued to track him down, as they called the police to make the arrest. Due to the employee's quick actions, the man was arrested as he awaits for his charges. This is the home security camera footage of the Chrysalic family. The camera is shown sitting on the kitchen counter as the youngest daughter sits on the couch in the background watching TV. Suddenly, a voice begins talking over the speaker. What you watching? Hey, what show is that? I've seen that show before. What's eating you up? The girl either doesn't hear the voice or chooses not to respond to it. That's when the dad, Adam, walks in the room, unaware he's being watched. The voice continues, and his head jolts towards the TV. When he realizes it wasn't coming from the TV, he pulls out his phone. That's when he remembers the ring camera. Hello? What are you eating? The voice attempts to imitate some sort of robotic ring text-to-speech voice. However, Adam knows his account's been hacked. 
he disabled the camera and contacted Ring about the incident. The company responded saying an unidentified phone had logged into the Ring account. They tried to trace it back to a source, but were unable to. They basically told him there was nothing they could do but have him change his password and set up two-factor authentication for his account. A couple in Georgia had installed a home security camera in their bedroom so they could keep an eye on their dog while they were away at work. One night, right after the woman had put the dog in his crate for the night, she heard a cough over the camera's speaker. Laying in bed, she looks over at it and sees the blue light turn on, which indicates someone was watching the live feed. She texts her boyfriend who was at work and asks him why he had the feed open. Seconds later, she gets a text back asking what she was talking about. Just then, a voice comes over the speaker. Wake up! Hello? Uh, excuse me. I can see you in the bed. Come on, let's up. Shortly after, she took the batteries out of the camera. The couple says they later found out that someone had hacked into the Ring account at least four times. They filed a police report, but nothing ever came of it. Security camera footage at a McDonald's captured a frightening scene. A young boy in a green shirt was playing alone in the store, with no sign of his parents around to supervise him. Then, a woman emerged from inside, walked directly to the child, picked him up, and left the premises, unnoticed by anyone. After the child's disappearance, they reported it to the police, and fortunately, they apprehended this woman and ensured the child's safety. Ali Porath is a mother of two daughters, one 13 years old and one 3 years old. On the night of February 20th, 2022, the three of them went shopping together. Their home security camera would show them returning home. They're seen walking inside and closing the door behind them. Shortly after, a man walks into frame from around their parked truck. The very first thing he does is try to open the door. Who are you talking to? Why? After knocking a few times, the man walks away. However, they later found out through a neighbor's camera that for the next five minutes, he walks around the house on his phone. Ali further reviewed the videos and found that it appears the man had been following them in his car all the way from the store. A few seconds after they park in the driveway, his car drives a bit further and parks a few houses down. After a few more seconds, he gets out and starts walking towards them. Thankfully, they were able to get everything inside and the door locked before he got there. Ali ended by writing, I don't know what this man's intentions were, but I don't think it was to rob us. I do believe that this was random and that we are not specifically targeted, but that he saw an opportunity when he saw a woman and two girls go into a house alone. Police were alerted, and they did search the area, but the man in the video was never found. In October of 2016, a family in Florida noticed multiple things missing from inside their home. The night before, everything was there, but when they woke up, stuff was missing. To figure out where it went, they reviewed their home security cameras. At 1.30 in the morning, this is what the cameras captured.
man walks around the house while three children are sleeping on couches only feet away from him. He walks around them looking for valuables and hands what he finds to another man standing just outside, this one armed. The family immediately called the police upon seeing the footage. Police opened an investigation, but never found the two men in the video. Police believe that had anyone in the house woken up during the break-in, they likely would have been shot. The haunting disappearance of the Jameson family in 2009 gained public attention and media coverage after some disturbing footage of the family was found by police. In 2009, Bobby and Sherilyn Jameson lived with their six-year-old daughter Madison in Eufaula, Oklahoma. Although they lived what appeared to be normal lives, the Jamesons' marriage was a rocky one, and police have long tried to figure out if their difficult circumstances were somehow tied to their disappearance. Around the time of their disappearance, the couple had been dealing with financial issues. Since 2003, the Jamesons had been on disability after Bobby was involved in a serious car accident that left him with severe chronic back pain. His wife, Sherilyn, had her own health issues. She had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but sometimes refused to take her medication. In 2009, the family decided to drive up to check out a 40-acre plot of land in Red Oaks, Oklahoma, about 30 miles away from their home in Eufaula. They specifically asked to inspect the plot of land without a real estate agent present. The Jamesons had told their friends and family that they were planning on moving there to start a new life after pulling their six-year-old daughter Madison out of kindergarten over some kind of disagreement with their daughter's school. During the week they drove up to Red Oaks, nobody heard from the family. Because they were an unusually private family that often went off the grid without contacting anybody for weeks at a time, nobody assumed that the Jamesons had disappeared. But after a pair of hunters discovered the family's truck abandoned on a dirt road at the edge of the woods nine days after they were last seen, it was clear that something was wrong. Inside the truck, police found a GPS, cell phones, empty pill bottles, wallets, and $32,000 in cash, which was extremely strange considering the Jamesons had been struggling financially. Disturbingly, the Jamesons' dog was found alive in the truck, dehydrated and starving after spending days in the locked vehicle. Police also reported that they found a chilling 11-page angry letter from Sherilyn to Bobby, in which she accused him of hating his daughter and being a loner and a hermit. According to a specific police report, there was a haunting sentence in the letter that read, I would not wish my daughter to be raised in foster care because of you being in prison for attempted murder and her mother dead. At this point, it was impossible for anyone to know what had happened to the Jamesons. But immediately after it was determined that the family was missing, police started to search around the area where the truck was found. For nine months, a search team consisting of 400 volunteers, 16 search dogs, unmanned drones, planes, horses, and a specialized search unit scoured the woods in search of the missing family. During this time, police found unsettling footage recorded by the family's home security cameras from the day the Jamesons vanished. In the video, Bobby and Sherilyn can be seen loading their truck in preparation for the trip, but something immediately seems off about the footage. The couple make over 20 trips to load the truck, sometimes putting things in the truck and then taking those same things back to the house, then back to the truck again. A few times, the husband and wife even walk from the truck to the house and back again without carrying anything in their hands. Strangely, the couple change clothes several times throughout the video, and it's hard to tell exactly with the low frame rate of the footage, but they seem to not interact with each other a single time. The psychologist that was called in to review the footage immediately attributed the couple's bizarre trance-like movements and strange behavior to illegal drug use. Bobby had a history of drug use, but it was never confirmed whether the couple was under the influence of drugs during the video. After looking deeper into the Jamesons' lives, police were only left with more questions. A pastor close to the family mentioned that shortly before their disappearance, Bobby had told him that there were spirits living on the roof of his house, and he had even requested that an exorcism be performed at his home multiple times. Bobby Jameson also owned a copy of the Satanic Bible, which he had been reading before his disappearance to try and find a way to make the spirits leave his house. Friends and family members have also mentioned that they believe the house was haunted, and many of them reported having paranormal experiences and feeling an overwhelmingly dark presence whenever they visited the house. Despite the validity of these claims, it is known that Sherilyn Jameson was involved in a kind of witchcraft. She frequently held seances at her house and often spoke about her supposed paranormal experiences. Sherilyn owned cats, and after they died, she suspected that her neighbors had poisoned them, so she spray-painted the words, Witches do not like it when their cats are killed on a large metal storage container on the Jamesons' property. 
The mystery around the case continued to grow, but it wasn't until November 2013, four years after the Jameson's disappearance, that two deer hunters stumbled upon the skeletal remains of two adults and a small child, about three miles from where the family's truck had been found four years earlier. Because the bones were heavily decomposed, it wasn't until eight months later that forensic investigators were finally able to confirm that the skeletons belonged to the Jameson family. Due to the state of the skeletal remains, the cause of death couldn't be determined. With so many disturbing events and unsettling circumstances leading to the family's disappearance, many theories about what had happened to the Jamesons began to surface. Police began by investigating Bobby Jameson's father in connection with the murders. Less than six months before the family's disappearance, Bobby had sued his father for $10,000 for making him work unpaid at his gas station, promising him that he'd give his son a stake in the business in the future. After his father sold the gas station and refused to pay him, Bobby started a lawsuit against his father. But things took a dark turn and Bobby had to get a restraining order after his father threatened to kill him and his family multiple times. Even though Bobby's father was a known meth user and was involved in criminal activity, police concluded that he was not involved in the family's death. One popular theory is that, considering Bobby Jameson's drug use and the unexplained $32,000 found in the family's car, it's possible that the Jamesons were involved in the drug trade and were killed in a drug deal gone wrong. The area where the bodies were found in is notorious for drug activity, but no solid evidence has been found to support this theory. Police found a small hole on the back of Bobby's head, but forensic experts believe that it was too small to be a bullet hole and that it was most likely caused by animals after his death. Other people have speculated that the Jamesons could have been involved in a cult. The strange symbols and cryptic writing that was found on the family's truck seem to support this idea, and Sherilyn's own mother claimed that her daughter was on a cult's hit list for some unknown reason. Although there has been cult activity in eastern Oklahoma since the 90s, their presence has decreased over the years, and it was never confirmed whether the Jamesons had any involvement with a cult. Because of the hate letter found in the truck and the couple's history of mental illness and drug use, some people think that either Bobby or Sherilyn could have murdered their family before themselves. With no evidence at the scene to support any of these theories, the case has remained unsolved for 14 years. Police and investigators are still searching for new evidence, but there are currently no suspects for the disappearance and murder of the Jameson family. Valence footage from inside the gas station shows Stephen entering the store at 2.26 a.m., appearing to be intoxicated as he stumbles around the store, shopping for snacks. His behavior doesn't seem to bother the store owner, and less than a minute later, he walks to the counter to pay for the snacks with his credit card. For a few minutes after that, Stephen had a casual conversation with two young women who were inside the gas station, but this happened out of the camera's view. Nearly a week after the initial footage was revealed, police obtained additional footage of Stephen that completely changed the course of the investigation. The CCTV footage shows Stephen standing next to his 2013 white Ford Fusion in the parking lot. He seems to get into some sort of altercation with the driver of an unidentified silver sedan, and as the silver car pulls away, Stephen takes a step back and throws what appears to be his drink at the driver. He gestures with his hands at the driver as he gets into his vehicle. And three minutes later, the silver car circles back into the gas station, this time pulling right behind Stephen's car. The driver's intentions are unknown, but as soon as Stephen pulls away in his Ford, the silver sedan speeds after him. This was the last time Stephen was seen alive. All police knew about the driver was that he was an African-American man who had walked shirtless into the gas station store a few minutes before the incident, but was never identified. For eight years, Fort Lauderdale police have been searching for Stephen's car. His license plate was never scanned by any license plate readers, indicating that he never left the Fort Lauderdale area. Search teams have combed through over 20 bodies of water looking for the car, but nothing has ever been found. Disturbingly, during the searches, almost 20 other vehicles have turned up in nearby lakes, ponds, and canals, including stolen vehicles with bullet holes, but nothing relating to Stephen's disappearance, not even a clue. As of 2023, detectives and investigators still have no idea if Steven was involved in an accident or if he became the victim of something much more sinister. In 2008, somewhere in Thailand, 
a group of friends were having a karaoke party at a friend's house when out of nowhere, something pretty creepy had appeared at the party. According to the group, as they were drinking and partying happily, an uninvited guest had made an appearance. Now it's safe to assume that the next time they throw a karaoke party, it won't be at this house, as what was caught on camera has left them all disturbed. The following is the video they took. It isn't until seconds later that a distinctive face can be seen in the background of this footage. However, as many viewers have pointed out, there's something about this face that just doesn't seem right. For one, it appears to have no body attached to its head, and according to some, if you look close enough, its face appears to be covered in blood. Despite its obvious appearance, no one at the party had noticed the floating head until looking back at the footage. But. As if this video wasn't creepy enough, the story behind it makes it even more unsettling. The friends have stated that on the same night of the karaoke party, a friend of theirs had gotten into a fatal car crash. Needless to say, the friend had passed away upon impact. It wasn't until the day after that the group was notified about their friend's death. Although very unfortunate, it was after hearing about this and looking at the video that they put two and two together and concluded that this mysterious face was actually their friend who passed away that same night. Although not entirely sure if that's the case, they can't help but think that this may have been the apparition of their friend who was paying them a final visit before passing away. Regardless, with or without context, the face itself is quite disturbing to look at. Even after 14 years, this video continues to remain a mystery. Even though the
In Lexington, Kentucky, a man was seen trying to open doors of apartments. He tried the door which wouldn't open, so he switched on to the next one. The resident of the previous apartment used the doorbell camera to ask him what he just tried to do. Open my door. What are you doing? Yeah. The man acts innocent and seems to not understand English properly. He tries to open the next door, showing as if it's his apartment. But the resident knew someone else lived there and threatened the man to leave or else he'd call the cops. Uh, you said what? Yeah. I know it was like you. Somebody lives there. Well, I'm saying you over here try to open up people's doors, and I'm about to go ahead and screen. I'm about to screenshot you and send it in the uh, ring camera. Yeah, stay away from doors. If you buy my door again, I'm calling the police. The man backs off and leaves once he hears about the cops. Yes, it's Mark. Yeah, can I help you? Yes, it, it's Mark. It's Mark. We have been. A we're we're here to see our family. You have the wrong apartment. No, this is our apartment. This is the correct apartment. We're here. We're a family. We're alive. Don't ever come up here again, bro. Ever. We're alive. You're a family, too. You're kind of crazy. You're a family, too. I dare you. I dare you. You're a family. What? I'm standing here. I'm not pacing here. What are you up here for? I was pacing downstairs. Oh, we need our family. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What the fuck is... The stash cam footage was captured by a New Jersey police cruiser in the early hours of the morning of February 24th, 2023. A few minutes before this footage was recorded, several police officers and first responders had left their vehicles on a closed off highway lane to attend to the victims of a crash involving an SUV that had spun off the road after the driver had lost control of the vehicle. What starts out as uneventful footage of a couple police cars stopped on the highway soon takes a terrifying turn. The dashcam video shows New Jersey State Trooper Stefan Lentini shining his flashlight at an oncoming heavy-duty tow truck to try and get the driver's attention. Alarmingly, the truck doesn't seem to be showing any signs of stopping or even moving to the next lane. As the 40,000-pound truck's headlights continue to approach the trooper and his car, Lentini is forced to run off the highway to avoid the oncoming truck. After the truck slams into three police cars and an ambulance, panic state trooper DeVry Mariano's voice can be heard as he calls desperately for his partner, serving as a chilling reminder of how tragically this crash could have ended. Amazingly enough, no one, not even the truck driver, was seriously injured during the incident.
Although the 53-year-old tow truck driver was given a summons for the careless driving that resulted in three total police cars and a damaged ambulance, the factors leading up to the crash have not yet been revealed. Though, many are suspicious of the driver falling asleep at the wheel or just not paying attention in general. All right, guys, we made it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed it. And I cannot wait to see you guys on the next video. So with that being said, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I want to definitely talk to you guys. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye.